given what we know of modern species dynamics and recent extinction rates, we know that the majority of organisms will eventually go extinct. Likewise, the majority of past organisms also go extinct. Thus, we should reasonably expect our ancestors had many other descendants and relatives that did not leave descendants which survive today. In short, we expect that majority of fossil species that we find should not be the actual common ancestors of modern species, but rather they should be related organisms that eventually ended in extinction. The oldest rocks on Earth are about four billion years old, and they are lacking any signs that life existed at that time. Some rocks from 3.5 billion years ago may contain fossil bacteria, but there is some controversy about them. The oldest well-accepted fossils are stromatolites that date about 3.4 billion years ago. The oldest eukaryote fossils, cells that have a nucleus, are about 1.75 billion years old. And another billion years passed until we see evidence for the first multicellular life about 750 million years ago. By 580 million years ago, we find evidence for animals in the form of small sponges and sea anemones and jellyfish. The creatures of the Cambrian, 540 million years ago, are mollusks, trilobites, worms, echinoderms, and primitive chordates. All of these species are extinct today. Over the next 200 million years, we finally see insects and fishes with jaws. But no amphibians, no reptiles, no land animals at all, no mammals or birds. On the plant side, it is during this period we first see ferns and later gymnosperms. But no flowers and no hardwoods. These show up much later. About 340 million years ago, we see tetrapods for the first time, and then amphibians. And later, 300 million years ago, we see the first small reptiles, all extinct today. From 220 million to 65 million years ago, the large reptiles and dinosaurs dominate the land and sea. Life is varied. There are tens of thousands of species, all extinct today. During this period, we first see mammals, but there are no humans, apes, monkeys, dogs, cats, horses, whales, dolphins, bats, rats, or kangaroos. From 65 million years ago, we begin to see birds in hardwood forest and large animals that have shapes somewhat like modern animals. Of course, mammoths, giant sloths, and saber-toothed cats will go extinct, along with thousands of other species before we get to the present. Macroevolution is evident in abundance in the fossil record. Species come and go, and when they emerge, it is always from an ancestor. A useful definition of species is this. A species is a group of organisms that can interbreed. And as new species form from old species, there are all possible stages of interbreeding capability observed. There are countless cases of distinct species which can, in unusual or limited circumstances, form hybrids. One example is the West European carrion crow and the Asian hooded crow which have distinct ranges meeting in a narrow zone where they interbreed and form hybrids. Another are the different Platte River species of suckerfish of the same genus which live together and only rarely interbreed. Some species, like the salamander in Satina, form a chain of interbreeding populations which loop around in a geographical feature. This is the Central Valley of California. 
and the salamanders inhabit the entire parameter of the valley. Neighboring populations can interbreed with themselves and other close neighbors, but as the mileage increase between small groups, they can no longer breed, and where the populations meet on the other side of the valley, they behave as completely different species. This salamander is a good example of new species being formed gradually, with the accumulation of small mutations resulting in separate species. These two goals were originally identified as distinct species in England since they didn't interbreed. However, there is a continuous ring of their hybrids extending to the east and the west all the way around the North Pole. Only in England are they incapable of interbreeding. Many other species can mate and produce viable hybrids, like lions and tigers, or horses and donkeys. But the hybrid offsprings are infertile. The Tree of Life illustrates countless speciation events. Each common ancestor also represents at least one speciation event. Current estimates from the fossil record and measured mutation rates place the time required for full reproduction isolation in the wild at about 3 million years on average. Consequently, observations of speciation in nature should be possible but a rare phenomenon. However, Evolutionary rates in laboratory organisms can be much more rapid than rates inferred from the fossil record. And speciation has been observed in many common lab organisms. Speciation of numerous plants such as the hemp nettle, the primrose, radish, and cabbage, maize, and wire lettuce has been seen. Some of the most studied organisms in all of genetics are the fruit flies. Many Drosophila speciation events have been extensively documented since the 1970s. Speciation in Drosophila has occurred by spatial separation, by habitat specialization in the same location, by changing courtship behavior, by disruptive natural selection, and by bottlenecking populations, among other mechanisms. Speciation events have also been seen in house flies, gall former flies, apple maggot flies, flower beetles, worms, mosquitoes, and various other insects. Green algae and bacteria have been classified as speciated due to change from unicellularity to multicellularity, and due to changes from short rods to long rods, all the results of selection pressures. Speciation has also been observed in mammals. Six instances of speciation in house mice on Madeira within the past 500 years have been the consequence of only geographic isolation genetic drift, and chromosomal fusion. With two chromosomes joined together, it is called chromosomal fusion. Some of these Madeiran mice species have undergone nine chromosomal fusions in the past 500 years. It should be noted that a single chromosomal fusion is the primary genomic difference between humans and chimpanzees.